so the theme for the month of July, the overarching theme, is truth sets us free. And each week we'll be looking at a different truth to help expand us in our own relationship with ourselves, with God, with our life, that we can truly live as a fulfilled and self-actualized being on the planet, to be part of the ever-evolving upward spiral of good. This week's theme is finding the golden thread. And the golden thread for me is the consciousness that unites us first and foremost with God, the power, the one, the one that unites us with that all-encompassing power for good. And that thread that unites us and connects us with our own potentiality, our own potential and the possibility within us and then, of course, connects us with one another. Ernest Holmes and Ralph Waldo Emerson said, unity is at the center and base of everything. And Emerson added, and diversity is at the circumference. Because we are not here to be exactly the same, but to certainly honor and recognize our oneness with God, our oneness with our potential and our goodness, and our oneness with each other. This is not a new concept. Now, the religion of which we are a part is New Thought. New Thought is a religion that was established in the United States in the 1900s. We are a new religion philosophy teaching here, in name only. The roots of this teaching, this philosophy, this religion, go back to really ancient times. And if we could have the picture of Indra's net, I know our adventure in spirit last year was focused on Indra's net, but Indra's net is a visual from 2,000 years ago from the Vedic tradition, the Hindu philosophy of their cosmology, their view of the world. And it was said that Indra's net hung over the palace of the god Indra, and it showed the workings of the world, and it was infinite and eternal, and that every being on the planet was one of those little multifaceted jewels in Indra's net. The multifaceted jewels in Indra's net. But the beauty of this, besides all being connected, is that every jewel, every single jewel, reflected every other jewel in the cosmos. And I believe that's telling us that we have a gigantic responsibility to keep our jewel clean. A little polishing of the jewels. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean we don't do crazy things. It just means we have the responsibility to always keep our mind on the good that's at hand. Because it said, it was said in that ancient time, that what happened to one jewel on the far, farthest edge, directly, happened to all of the other jewels, in a smaller extent, but happened to everyone. So when we say we want to be a beneficial presence on the planet, this was a story that's thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. We are connected and we have a responsibility, I believe, to do the best we can to awaken to the unity of life, our unity with God, our potential, and each other. So this golden thread that connects us, sometimes, if things are going well, some of you right now, things are going really well, well we feel that thread, woo -hoo! we're there, we just know that we're in alignment, we're connected to the all good, and then sometimes we're not. I don't know where you are, but it's all part of this cycle. And believe me, when things are the worst, it's the opportunity to manifest and demonstrate the greatest good. So sometimes our thread feels a little loose. Have you ever been there? You just sort of don't feel connected to things and feel all alone and separated. And... Nobody? Good. Okay, I'll just skip that part then. When our thread is loose, it's just telling us we need to strengthen our faith. Because our th thread is only loose because we're looking at this external world as the truth of our life, and it's calling for us to recognize there's so much good going on. 
Ernest Holmes invites us, when things are going tough, to put on the armor of God. Well, it's not the armor like the knights wore, you know, that big, heavy iron armor. It's the armor of the vibration of goodness, where we put in our mind the expanded faith that good is here now. We put in our hearts, after we've taken off that veil of illusion and separation, that we put in our hearts the unconditional love for ourselves and others. And when we put on this cloak of God, what we have on our feet are the slippers of peace. Because we can't be wearing this energy and light of God without walking this planet in peace and recognizing that good is at hand. Number one, so if your thread is a little loose, tighten it up by saying, I trust in the goodness of God. I trust in the goodness of life. I trust that good is happening right now. If we're here, we have a belief that we're one. God, infinite intelligence is all there is, and that intelligence is good. It's always for us and never against us. Well, if God is for us, who would be against us? Just us. If we're in a story that we don't like in our life, the great freedom we have is we have the freedom to choose. We can choose to change the story, but there's only one player that really matters. And that's the main character. That's you and me. I know times in my life where I've had to have the strength and courage in difficult times to get up and just say, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm not going to let unhappiness rule my life. I'm not going to let anger, upset rule my life. I'm going to choose. And you know, inside of each and every one of us is planted that seed of freedom that Ernest Holmes talked us about, that seed of freedom to choose, but like the prodigal son, we have to make the discovery for ourselves and choose to do it differently. To untie the knots that get in our thread, the confusing thoughts that are the errors and thought that we're separate, we're alone. We can choose to make things different. Every single problem in our life comes with a gift in hand. But you and I know what we feed grows. And what we starve lessens and dies. Just ask the garden. We have to ask, what are we feeding in our life? Are we feeding the possibility for health and abundance and love and creativity and connection or not? It's up to us. We get that. We've been given it all. Right now, every single person here has everything they need to live a joyful, happy, and successful life. We choose. We've been told that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It's there for us. You and I, we have to open the door. It's like the engine of our car stays idle until we put in the key and start it. You and I have to choose that we want to make a difference, that we want to be part of this. We want to enter into a place where we leave behind the... I know, it's the problems and the chaos tugs at us because it gets kind of exciting sometimes. It gives us excuses anyway. But if we have to make the decision that we want to live in a more fulfilled, connected environment. We need to be truthful and honest and share with one another that we can live in that place. We decide what we're feeding and what we're not. It's up to us. It's up to you and it's up to me. The two greatest gifts that we can have to open that door are love and creativity. The love starts with ourself though. We can only love others as much as we love ourselves. And loving ourself is about preparing, motivating, and planning for the good. Would you agree with me? For ourselves, we have to start seeing what's good and right and true in our lives. What possibilities are right before us that we can do. And when we love ourselves enough to prepare and plan for the good, that's when we can love others. That's when we can walk through the door of the kingdom that's already there. We can walk through the door, but I'll tell you what's going to happen. The minute you walk through that door, it's going to demand something else of you. Flexibility. Willingness. 
to change your mind and to grow into something better. To grow into something better. We all come with a race consciousness, a mind that has carried with it the, the problems of our ancestors and our past and our history. We all have that in our mind. And we have to have the courage to strengthen ourselves spiritually to make new choices. I'm going to ask you right now, what spiritual practices are you doing right now to strengthen the good in your life? How many of you did one this morning already? Five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Okay, eight. We've got to be doing these practices all the time. They need to become a way of life that we practice and train our mind to focus on what's right and good. We don't want it to take a lifetime. Now, today is the time to start changing for the good. So I'm going to tell you a story. And... Um, it's about another 19th century situation. It's a, a poet from the 19th century, an American poet, who challenged some of the British poets at the time. He, he was a poet, but he also used his poetry for reform. He felt that poetry could change people's lives, could change the country, and do things for the better. And he was truly a civil rights advocate, and he wanted good for all. And he wrote a poem called Vision by Sir Lawnful. And let me give you a little preface. We know the legend of the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is supposedly the chalice <clears throat> that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. It contained blessings and miracles and goodness. And it was said that the Holy Grail was moved to England. And at that time, anyone who was a keeper of the Holy Grail had to be chast in deed, word, and action. Pure holy, to be the keeper of such a holy uh, artifact. Well, there was one keeper that broke the promise, and the grail disappeared. So <clears throat> it was the knights of uh, King Arthur, the knights of King Arthur, that went out, and in their greatest quest, their greatest adventure was to go out and search for the holy grail. So this poem is about one of those knights, Sir Lonfil. And Sir Lonfil, oh, he was filled with himself. He was pretty hot stuff. He was going to go out and he was going to find the grail and he was going to get it. And so he left the castle, haughty and proud. And as he walked across the drawbridge onto the path, he saw a leopard by the side of the road. He disdainfully saw the leopard by the side of the road. And he looked at the leper and he cast him a gold coin scornfully, and it fell into the dust beside the leper, and the, the leper just refused to pick up the coin and said, that is no gift. The knight didn't care. He went on. But life had lessons to teach the knight. He learned a lot from the hardships of life, and years later, he returned to the castle. He returned to the castle cold, beaten, and begging for alms himself. And as he comes right before the drawbridge, again, he sees the leper by the side of the road. But this time, as he looked at the leper, he was reminded of the heartless man he used to be. The heartless man that he was. And instead of walking by, he sat down with the leper and he opened his tattered satchel and he shared his stale bread and water. And as he did that, here are the words he heard. The gift is not that which we give, but what we share. For the gift without the giver is bare. He who shares feeds three, himself, his hungering neighbor, and me. When we raise our consciousness to a place of sharing in the world, 
When we say our prayer for ourselves that's filled with passion, that's filled with knowing and goodness, it's not enough to hold it for ourselves. We must be sharing our prayers and knowing goodness for others too. If we want this beautiful net to be shiny, if we want it to be sparkly and empowered, we need to share the good that we have here, that we have here, and the peace that we know is possible. If we find no peace, Mother Teresa said, if we find no peace in our lives and in the world, it's because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. We've forgotten that we're part of the greater whole. So in your prayers, in your spiritual practice that connect you with the good of life that's ever here for you, I simply invite you this week to send your prayer to someone else that you know is in need of a greater good, a greater experience. Or someone you know is already blessed and you simply hold that goodness for them, holding more love, more goodness, more blessings. Today is the day. We can't put this off any longer. It's time for us to truly be walking the path of goodness and love and joy. Ask yourself, what did I do today to bring more joy and love and goodness into my life? Remember, who you are reflects to others. If you go around mopey and unhappy, yeah, it's okay sometimes to bring people in to support you. Thank God it is. But uh, we have a responsibility to always keep our eye on the star, on the goodness, on the light, on the golden thread. Martin Luther King said, a um, quote I've read before, but I think so imperative in our, in our world at this time. And the good and the advancement we see is happening already in the world. As Reverend Bobby said, peace, freedom is a process. We have to keep working it. It's not that it's just here, it takes work. We gotta keep doing it, we gotta keep thinking it. It's a process we keep holding and moving, turning it on, powering up. King says, our world, through advancements in science and technology, is graphically one, geographically one. We are now faced with the challenge of making it spiritually one. There's where the golden thread is. Spiritually one. Remember, at the center is unity. The circumference is diversity. The circle holds it all. Are we going to recognize it and honor it and include it or shut it off. That's our choice. He goes on to say, through our scientific genius, we have made of the world a neighborhood. And now, through our moral and spiritual, spiritual genius, we, make a, what we must make of it a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a human family. We are all involved in a single process. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. The same thing. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. We are all links in the chain of humanity. So my invitation for us this day is to simply shine our jewel. Know that in this moment we have everything we need. Know in this moment we can make a choice to focus on the good. Even if things are tough, there's a gift, there's a joy, there's a possibility that's waiting to be born for each of us. I'm just going to invite you now, just take out, re reach the hand there, please. Take that hand. And I want you to think in your mind and heart of a prayer you want to extend to the people that are right here with you. What do you want to give and share? Because in sharing, you feed yourself, you feed the person, you feed God. Life is good. May I have music up, please? because we're going to only stretch this way for just a minute. So close your eyes and just know right here and right now, you are a jewel in Indra's net, multifaceted, multi-talented, with so many gifts to share. You have everything you need right now to make the choice for good, for light, for love. And also, you have the gift of making this world a better place for others. And simply give that hand a squeeze. And as you let it go, because I know some of you are stretched really far, just... <laughs> Know that we're still connected by that golden thread of love. The golden thread 
of creativity, the golden thread of freedom. Mmm, just let that ignite as I know together this is the day that you and I come together and make the choice for good. That as we walk out of these doors today, we are powered by a spirit greater than we are, of which we're all a part, a power for good and light and love. This is the time that we free ourselves from any of the old stuff of the past. And we say, I am in the right time in history. I am in the right time in the world. I am here because I make a difference. And so do you. And so it is. Thank you all for being part of this good that's happening. I bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank